Yo, this is Alan Fenstermaker here. I'm here with Rob Feinstein. Rob, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Cool, man. It's an honor to interview you, and I got some questions for you. So, um, Shoot. anyways, uh, how did you find your way as a scribe for professional wrestling? I've been a wrestling fan all my life. Uh, back in the 80s, I started watching wrestling in around 83. And uh, I started up a video collection basically by getting the Wrestling Observer. At some time, maybe four years after I was watching the business, I learned about the Observer. And they had a reader's page back then where people were advertising videotapes from all the different territories. So I started putting my name in the hat pretty much and getting up a collection, trading tapes with different people in Memphis and Florida and uh, Japan and, and all that. And pretty much just built up, built up my collection from that. Okay. Yeah. Now, um, what do you think the future of professional wrestling is? Right now, I think the future of professional wrestling is going to be great. Uh, there's a lot of young talent out there. A lot of guys that uh, are being used all over the country now have made it to NXT, so it shows promise to the younger guys, the smaller guys that are in the business because you don't have many giants out there like you did in the 80s. So I think if you look at all the different companies, and I don't think the territories are coming back, but there's a lot of different companies all over the states now where guys are now being able to get to the next level. Uh, they're evolving, so to speak, and getting up to NXT and getting uh, looked at from the uh, – uh, the powers that be, which is, of course, the WWE, which is pretty much the major player right now in the United States. And, of course, we have AEW coming right down the bat in the next couple of months. They have the big show coming up as well down in uh, Chicago again. So, okay. Now, what are your thoughts on AEW? Anyway, Vegas, sorry. Vegas. Okay. Yep. What are your thoughts on uh, the new AEW? I think it's going to be great. I think it gives an opportunity to guys that are not going to WWE yet, and it's a new platform for guys like the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega, Kenny Omega where they don't have to uh, – sorry, Kenny. They don't have to go to WWE and make their money there. They can make money outside of WWE, and, and they prove that they can, and they're very smart at what they do. They know how to market themselves. So right now they have a great uh, marketing campaign and, and background, and what they do on social media is amazing, how they're getting all their followers and fans. So I think they're going to be a, a big force to reckon with, and especially if they get a TV deal in October, which is the rumor, I think, that uh, they're definitely going to be uh, a number two promotion in the States, for sure. Awesome, man. Now, um, how did, you, how did uh, the age of the Internet uh, that we were in affect video sales? It affected video sales in a big way, especially over the last couple of years. You put out a DVD, put out a shoot interview, and within like two days it's up on YouTube or, or whatnot, and you take it down and it's back up there. So it really has uh, hurt the business a lot from bootleggers, but you know that's how I started my business from bootlegging. So I'm not going to be a hypocrite and, and stand here and blast anybody. But yeah, the age of uh, social media has definitely hurt the, the video sales, the DVD sales of uh, our company. Not only our company, I know everybody's suffering, but we're still here. We do things differently with video on demand now. So uh, uh, we're always looking for new ways to market our videotapes. So, okay. yeah. All right. Now, uh, who was the first shoot interview done, and uh, how did it come to be? Well, I think, you know, I'm not positive who it was. It was either Sandman or New Jack. It was one of those two guys. And I got the idea from watching, well, reading the uh, Pro Wrestling Torch, Wade Keller would do interviews. And I pretty much said it would be a great concept to do this on video. So I pretty much started doing interviews. It was like around 95, 96. Okay. Yeah. All right. Shh, shh, shh. Now, uh, what made you decide to start Ring of Honor? After ECW went out of business in 2001, there was a big void in the uh, Northeast region for professional wrestling. We were going to indie shows in New York and New Jersey. Myself, Doug, and uh, Gabe Sapolsky was working for me at the time. And I knew there was a big void left. We learned the business from Paul Heyman and traveling around with ECW for all of those years. So I figured and uh, what not, I guess it was a great idea basically that came about because we wanted to pretty much take the place of ECW and pre present wrestling as a sport once again. And we pretty much came up with the idea. I came up with it and I talked to Gabe about it. And at first he didn't want to do Ring of Honor. He's like, oh, you're going to lose all your money. It's a bad idea. And I said, look, if there's anybody that knows wrestling, it's us three. Let's put our minds together and let's do this. And we created the company called Ring of Honor. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Now, uh what was, it, what was it like at the ECW arena at Heat Wave 95 to attack Paul Heyman? Oh, it was great. I still watch that every day. Not every day. I'm just joking. But, uh, I mean, not many guys are able to say they beat up Paul Heyman, even though it's a work or whatnot. But, uh, no, it was really cool. I was uh, honored to be in the ring with Paul Heyman, a uh, mentor, and uh, to be able to lay the boots to Paul and, and punch him a couple times in the face. I think a lot of guys want to do that today. I'm just joking. But, uh, yeah, it was a great memory, and ECW was always be a big part of my life. But that, that was a fun night. I got frog splashed by Eddie Guerrero, too. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. What was that like, being frog splashed by him? Awesome. Piece of cake. And uh, he's a pro, and I love Eddie Guerrero. I loved him. He's one of the top guys and brought him into our very first show for Ring of Honor. Okay. And uh, may he rest in peace, by the way. 100%. Yep. What is your favorite match of all time? My favorite match of all time would probably be Wrestle War 89 with Ric Flair and Ricky Steamboat. Nice. It was a perfect match. The story was there and perfect finish. 
was great. Yeah. Now, uh, what was your favorite era in uh, wrestling history? 80s, hands down. Wrestling will never be the same. I watch it today, and I have this discussion all the time with Tommy Dreamer and other people that are in my little circle. Um, there will never be another era like the 80s when you had all the territories and when wrestling was presented as a sport and there was kayfabe. And today you watch the business, and it's totally different from what it was back in the 80s, which is it's not a bad thing, but wrestling was better in the 80s. It was real. Okay. Wink, wink. Now, what would you say is the biggest difference uh, in the business now than it was back in the 80s? Oh, the guys that are smaller are getting a chance. Um, we covered that a little bit. The lack of kayfabe in the business today, I've always said, is like I don't like it, but I see where it is, and it's you know there's nothing you can do about it. But, uh, yeah, the business is totally different from the 80s. It's good and bad, and business is thriving right now, so you really can't complain. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's it. Now, um, thanks for doing this interview, man. I appreciate hey, thanks it. Thanks for having cool. us. Thanks for the time.